Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everybody. Today we are going to continue with chapter 2 states of matter. This is lesson 12. Solid. We are going to learn about solid. By stating the properties of solid, we should be able to explain the process of freezing, melting, sublimation and deposition. We also should be able to define amorphous and crystalline solids by stating the types of crystalline solids with appropriate examples. The solids are metallic, ionic, molecular covalent and giant covalent solid. Solid exhibits specific features by having definite shape and volume, cannot be compressed, can form crystals, and have extremely slow diffusion rate. As you can see, solid can form liquid by melting. Liquid freezes to become solid. And solid can turn into gas by undergoing sublimation, whereas gas deposited to become solid. When a solid substance is heated, its particles gain energy and able to vibrate quickly and energetically. At its melting point, the particles have enough energy to weaken the attractive forces between themselves, making the particles freely to move. Here, solid is changing into liquid. A liquid is changing into solid when the temperature of a liquid is lowered. That we know. But what about the explanation molecularly? The kinetic energy of the liquid particles decreases, making the liquid particles vibrate at lower speed. At one point, the intermolecular forces are strong enough to hold the particles together in a fixed and orderly arrangement. This is when the liquid freezes. Sublimation process is a process whereby a substance goes directly from solid to the gaseous state without passing through the liquid state. Deposition, on the other hand, is the opposite process of sublimation whereby the molecules from vapor changes directly to the solid state. There are two types of solid, which is crystalline solid and amorphous solid. Crystalline solid is consists of atoms, ions or molecules that are in order, that are in well-defined arrangements, whereas amorphous solid is solid whose particles have no orderly structure. Crystalline solid formed when a saturated liquid is cooled slowly. But amorphous solid is formed when a saturated liquid is cooled rapidly, fastly. Crystalline solid has its atoms, molecules, and ions occupy a specific position. For example, ice, sugar, and salt. But amorphous solid doesn't have a specific position, and the examples are glass, plastic material, and charcoal. Look at this picture showing diamonds a crystalline solid possessing a rigid and long-range order 
in a crystalline solid, atoms, molecules, or ions occupy specific predictable positions. But an amorphous solid, for example, you can see here the glass, the plastic fork, and wax. They do not possess a well-defined arrangement, and do, they do not have long-range molecular order. Let's look at the glass. Glass is optically transparent fusion product of inorganic material that has been cooled down to a rigid state without crystallizing. On the left, you can see an example of a crystal which has a well-defined arrangement and long-range molecular order. But on the right, you can see the amorphous solid having a non-crystalline structure. There are four types of crystalline solid. The first one is ionic solid, followed by the giant covalent solid. We add in the giant. And the third one is simple molecular solid. And number four is metallic solid. Let's look into detail for ionic solids. They were held together by electrostatic attraction forces. The lattice points is occupied by cations and anions. They were hard, brittle and have high melting points. They are poor conductor of heat and electricity. The examples are Cesium chloride, zinc sulfide, and calcium fluoride. Let's talk about giant covalent solids. Why is it called giant? Ah, because it's big, of course. Lattice points for giant covalent solids are occupied by atoms. They were held together by covalent bonds. That's why it's strong. It is hard and have high melting point. It is a poor conductor of heat and electricity. Look at the carbon atom inside the circle. It is bonded to four other carbon atoms in the form of tetrahedral. So it's strong. For a simple molecular covalent solid, the lattice points are occupied by molecules. It is held together by intermolecular forces. It is soft and having low melting point. It is poor conductor of heat and electricity. You can see the example here shown to you is ice, H2O. Next is for metallic solids. The lattice points is occupied by metal atoms. It is held together by metallic bonds. It can be soft, it can be hard, it has low and high melting points, uh, depending on the element. They are all good conductors of heat and electricity. You can see in this cross section of a metallic crystal, the plus sign here is the nucleus and the inner shell of an atom. And around the positive sign, all the way here, everywhere here, is the mobile sea of electron. The electron are free to move around all around the metallic solid so that they can conduct heat and electricity efficiently. So there we go. We have finished explaining the freezing, melting, sublimation, deposition process. And we are introduced to amorphous and crystalline solids, which are metallic, ionic, cov molecular, covalent, and giant covalent solids. Thank you all for listening and see you again soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.